The Harry Potter fandom has become such a cult that some fans are even able to quote every single movie now. There are some cool things that J.K. Rowling thought of since the very first book, but some of them can be a little bit contradictory. In this video, we will show you a few details that even the most loyal Harry Potter fan could have missed. Dumbledore's Negligence Remember the very beginning of the story when Hagrid brought one-year-old Harry to Privet Drive? There we see McGonagall and Dumbledore already waiting for them and speaking of the future of the boy who lived. As it happens later, Aunt Petunia's house gets some sort of protection as soon as she acknowledges Harry as her nephew. Everything would have been perfect if it hadn't been for just one little nuance. Let's take a closer look at that night. Dumbledore brings Harry to his aunt's house's door at midnight and leaves a one-year-old child outside in November. A little child is left lying there for almost the whole night during winter. We might believe that Dumbledore used some spell on Harry to keep him warm, but what about Voldemort's followers? Really? No Death Eater would have thought of looking for Harry in a location as obvious as his aunt's place? So, on the night of the Dark Lord's failure, an unprotected young Harry is lying on some house's porch where nobody can defend him. That's slightly negligent on Dumbledore's part, don't you think? The Lord's Supper Do you remember that weirdo Professor Trelawney who taught Harry prophecy in Hogwarts? Few believed that she actually had the powers, yet she still sometimes said weird things that turned out to be true. In The Prisoner of Azkaban, Professor Trelawney refused to sit at the same table as Dumbledore because there were already 12 people sitting there. I can't, Professor. If I sit, there will be 13 of us. And remember, when the 13 dine together, the first to rise will be the first one to die. It's not just a reference to the Lord's Supper from the Bible. In The Order of the Phoenix, Sirius was the first one to leave the table. In the Deathly Hallows, only 13 made it to the burrow after Operation Seven Potters. Lupin was the first one to leave the table to find the body of Alistair Moody. Later, he would be the first one to die during the Battle of Hogwarts. The Magic Number Seven There is also another number that we keep seeing. It's not just another reference to the Bible, as it appears there all the time. Of course, it's Number Seven. Let's do a little maths here and start from the most obvious fact. Seven years of schooling in Hogwarts. Well, guess how many players there are in a Quidditch team? Bingo! And which number does Harry wear? Pay attention! Daniel had to use all his acting techniques at the beginning of part one of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows as he had to portray six people who changed their appearance with the Polyjuice Potion, and he himself was the seventh one. The Weasleys have seven children, and Hogwarts has just as many flaws. When Dumbledore first comes to see Tom Riddle in his room at the orphanage, one can spot seven little stones that stand for the seven future Horcruxes. Professor Lockhart The job of the Professor of Defense Against the Dark Arts seemed to be cursed. None of the teachers stayed for longer than a year, and there was always a reason behind them leaving. At first, Voldemort taught the class, then Voldemort's stooge, then Voldemort's fake stooge. A lot of things happened during the seven years of education, but we all remember the talentless and dull Gilderoy Lockhart from Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Anyone who's seen the professor doing anything for longer than five minutes would understand that he is a hack. And of course, Professor McGonagall knew that, as she was constantly showing her defiance to him. However, McGonagall did send him to the Chamber of Secrets to save Ginny. And what's more, it's weird that he even got the job and taught Defense Against the Dark Arts, as it's obvious how important this class is. When hiring someone for that job, it wouldn't be odd to do some kind of background check on him, right? And any test would immediately show that Gilderoy Lockhart is an imposter. That means that Dumbledore was either negligent while choosing a teacher or just didn't care much. It's worth mentioning that Dumbledore's personnel policy is rather inadequate, even despite the fact that the opening for the Professor of Defense Against the Dark Arts was cursed. Alistair Moody Well, speaking of teachers of Defense Against the Dark Arts, do you remember Alistair Moody, who Barty Crouch Jr. pretended to be? Of course, there was a great plot twist, and keep in mind that in the Goblet of Fire, Alistair taught Harry a lot of things, deserved sympathy, and never that's important, aroused any suspicion from Dumbledore or anyone else. 
So, he was the true Alistair without actually being him. Later, when we see the real Alistair, there's no difference between him and the fake one. And that is weird, as the Polyjuice Potion only gives you the appearance of a person, not their character. Turns out that Barty Crouch was a genius faker. Illiteracy They don't pay much attention to education there at Hogwarts, do they? Have you ever seen students studying maths, physics, or literature? Or is knowing how to turn your rival into a polecat or how to get rid of bones in your body more important than knowing English? Turns out that when it comes to traditional classes, the wizard's progress stops at the level of an 11-year-old child. Muggle studies give us hope, but it's an elective, and we have no idea what they've been studying there. Perhaps we just haven't been told about all the nuances of Hogwarts education. Always. What about another professor of defense against the dark arts, Severus Snape? Everything seems a bit ambiguous there. On the one hand, since his very first meeting with Harry, he's been showing his defiance. On the other hand, in the end, we see his other side and notice details we hadn't paid attention to earlier. At their first meeting in class, Snape asks Harry, Tell me, what would I get if I added powdered root of asphodel to an infusion of wormwood? According to Victorian flower language, asphodel is a type of lily, meaning my regrets follow you to the grave, and wormwood means absence, and also typically symbolized bitter sorrow. So the hidden meaning of Snape's question is actually a confession. I bitterly regret Lily's death. Isn't that beautiful? Horcruxes The Dark Lord created Horcruxes, and then, after his attempt to kill Harry, just vanished into the air. Why couldn't he re-emerge from one of the Horcruxes, if that's why they were created? After his attempt to be reborn from the diary, why did he never try to re-emerge from the ring, the tiara, etc.? If re-emerging from a Horcrux can only be activated with the help of another person, Ginny Weasley and the diary, how could Voldemort hope that such backup would even be useful? And then, why did he create them in the first place? Too many questions about these Horcruxes. Trelawney is actually able to foresee. We all know that Harry was the last Horcrux. That means that during all this time, he had a part of Tom Riddle inside him, which definitely explains a lot of things, including one phrase that Professor Trelawney once said. In The Prisoner of Azkaban, she says to Harry, I think I am right, my dear, in saying that you were born in midwinter. Harry then tells her he was born in July, which questions her ability to foresee the future. But Voldemort was born on the 31st of December, and that means that Trelawney felt the Dark Lord's presence four years before Harry and the readers found that out. Moaning Myrtle One more phrase you might have missed which also carried a deep meaning. Ron found it funny when he found out that Tom Riddle had a special award for service to Hogwarts. He joked, maybe he murdered Myrtle. That would have done everyone a favor. Tom really did kill Myrtle with the help of the Basilisk. Not a very funny joke, is it? The Marauder's Map The Marauder's Map is quite a powerful instrument that allowed Harry in the Prisoner of Azkaban to not only find a few secret routes, but also to find Peter Pettigrew. Peter has lived as a rat in the Weasley family for 12 years. At first, he was Percy's pet, but then Ron took him. You've got the hint, right? The Marauder's Map was owned by the Weasley twins for some time. And how could they not have noticed some guy sleeping in their brother's bed? Doesn't make sense, does it? On the other hand, the map was really powerful, and that fact was acknowledged by Joanne Rowling herself. The Marauder's map subsequently became something of a bane to its true originator, me, because it allowed Harry a little too much freedom of information. But still, not a single word about a man in Ron's bed. Hedwig have you ever thought about why Harry's Owl had this name? Yes, the name is another hint about what's going to happen next. Saint Yadwiga, Hedwig, is known to be the patroness of dead children. So as long as Harry's Owl, Hedwig, was alive, it saved him from death a few times. When it died in the last book, it was probably a hint to Harry regarding the events that were to follow in the Deathly Hallows. The Sorting Hat have you ever thought about why Peter Pettigrew was sorted into Gryffindor? Peter isn't very heroic, but his ambitions, which are highly appreciated by Slytherin, would have to have influenced the hat's choice. 
Hermione Granger doesn't seem to belong to Gryffindor either, because Ravenclaw seems to be better suited for her. Neville Longbottom would also fit better in Hufflepuff. Seems like J.K. Rowling placed all the important positive or somewhat admirable characters into Gryffindor, and placed all the negative ones in Slytherin. On the other hand, in an interview, she tried to explain that phenomenon like this. The Hogwarts sorting hat usually thinks for less than five minutes. The writer explained that it took the hat a bit longer for Hermione, Neville and Harry than for other students. And when young Professor McGonagall and Peter Pettigrew went through their sorting, a hat stalls happened, and the hat thought for more than five minutes. It couldn't decide where to sort McGonagall, debating between Ravenclaw and Gryffindor, and debating between Gryffindor and Slytherin for Pettigrew. Cho Chang Remember Harry's first love? Well, if you watch the last movie really attentively, you'll see her a few times. But she shouldn't be there, as she was a year older than Harry. That means, back then, she should have already graduated. Voldemort was attacked with snowballs. And the funniest moment on this list. Let's return to the Philosopher's Stone in snow-covered Hogwarts. The book describes how Fred and George were punished for casting a few snowballs to fly around Quirrell and hit the back of his turban. Remember who was hiding under that very same turban? That means that the restless Weasley twins even played a prank on Voldemort. Comment below which fact was the most interesting for you. Thanks for watching. Did you enjoy the story? Subscribe to our channel so you won't miss out on new thrilling videos about your favorite celebs.